Good afternoon, this is TTT Live and TTT Live Online on Facebook. I'm DK Rostow with a COVID-19 review. There remains six active cases of COVID-19 here in Trinidad and Tobago. One person remains hospitalized in the high dependency unit at the Kufa Hospital. In its morning update, the Ministry of Health says the five other patients are low risk and stable. They are being cared for at the home of football in Kuvo. The total number of discharged is 102. The total number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 has held steady at 116 since April 26. There have been eight COVID-related deaths. The last was reported a month ago on April 6. The Ministry of Health says to date 2,055 samples have been sent for COVID-19 testing. 332 of those are repeated tests. A woman has been charged along with her husband and son internationally with killing a security guard who refused her daughter entry to a shop because she was not wearing a face covering. More on this story in our review of international developments in the COVID-19 pandemic. Security guard Calvin Munnellin was shot in the back of the head on Friday at the Family Dollar Store in Flint, Michigan, one of the U.S. states hardest hit by the pandemic. He was attacked after telling Sharmel Teague's daughter she could not come into the shop without a state-mandated mask. Mr. Munnellin was then attacked fatally by Teague's husband and son. A patient treated in a hospital near Paris on the 27th of December for suspected pneumonia actually had the coronavirus, his doctors said. Dr. Eves Cohen said a swab taken at the time was recently tested and came back positive for COVID-19. This means the virus may have arrived in Europe almost a month earlier than previously thought. India has recorded its sharpest rise in daily cases with 3,900 fresh infections reported in the last 24 hours. The total number of people to get the virus now stands at 46,433 with the climb in numbers following an increasing testing. Finally, a BBC program has claimed that Iran's largest airline, Mahan Air, continued to fly while government flight bans were in place and contributed to the spread of COVID-19 in the Middle East. Sources within the airline told the BBC that dozens of Mahan Air's cabin crew were showing symptoms of COVID-19 and that when staff tried to raise concerns, they were silenced. Video Ramfall, TTT News. Time now to return to regional news of COVID-19 as we speak with Dorian Pakeman, who is the director of the Belize Press Office. Thank you for agreeing to speak with us for a moment, Mr. Pakeman, asking about the general status on the ground. Um, hi, how are you? Well, the general st uh, status on the ground, as of right now, there is some uh, relief. Uh, we, have a, we're, we have an operating state of emergency that spans until the end of June. However, we can relax the restrictions or we can tighten them up um, by through statutory instruments. The latest statutory instrument that was signed yesterday actually allows the majority of businesses in the country to operate, however, with limited hours. So there's a general sense of relief that people are now able to go to work and there's um, some stimulus in the economy for right now because uh, the government was losing a lot of revenue during the mandatory lockdown and people weren't working. So now that employment is back up, people are back to work, starting to generate a little more revenue in the economy. Definitely good to hear. Hopefully measures are being taken as well. But I believe that the Belizean Prime Minister, Dean Barrow, he recently updated on some security measures. What are some of those measures and why were they needed? Well. Uh, there are measures in place. Uh, masks are now mandatory um, while out in public. Their gatherings are still um, no more than 10 people, and that includes funerals, wedding, weddings, and, uh, and such. Um, and with regard to security forces, um, our borders are closed. Our borders have been closed for almost a month now, and they remain closed. Uh, and that's even to Belize and nationals. We can't afford to take the risk of uh, we have some nationals and there's been talk of repatriation. However, at this point, that's not on the table because some of those Belizeans are in some COVID hotspots and we ask that they stay there until we get past this hump. But we do have a lot of uh, illegal border entries um, that aren't necessary, that where there aren't necessarily uh, standard uh, border points. 
and we've seen that people have been trying to sneak in uh, across those uh, into the country through those illegal entries. So we have security forces in place um, to to uh, mitigate that. Right, so that is happening. We also I want to switch to education now because there seem to be some ed interesting happenings with regard to the education front. The education minister he recently spoke about well he didn't give a reopening date for school but at the same time he spoke to the promotion and graduation of students what what can you tell us about that when it comes to the promotion and graduation of students at the primary school level there's automatic promotion to the next grade level for all um at for primary school on a whole up to standard six so they will automatically be promoted however students that are falling short of the curriculum of meeting the re requirements for the curriculum that year there are measures to be put in place where they would get extra support um, during this time and right now their education is taking place through a, a, a variety of mediums there's online learning through their television and radio programs with uh, that are broadcast countrywide daily and there are also manual workbooks for those children who live in rural communities that don't necessarily have access to electricity or um, can't uh, access online tools or, or television. Um, when it comes to secondary schools, there is an automatic promotion at the secondary school level. Um, promotion is governed by the, each school has their own guidelines and requirements for promotion and graduation. So they will govern that. However, again, um, it's asked by the ministry that they uh, provide extra support to those students who may be falling short of those requirements. And then we have the uh, vocational and training schools. Uh, at the moment, there is no, uh, no promotion for students attending uh, vocational and training schools. They have to meet the practical training lessons and, um, and on the job training requirements. So what they're at a standstill and when school resumes for them then they'll be able to go back and then uh, try to attain whatever it is that it's required of them for promotion grums i want you to speak to me about the education as the radio aspect of education programs i ask that because as in trinidad and tobago as in belize i'm sure there are some sectors, some segments of the population that are speaking to the fact that we don't necessarily have the wherewithal to be able to get a lot of these modules online. You all have gone a step further in terms of saying, okay, well, there are radio programs. How easy was that to do and who are some of the players that were involved? Well, it, it definitely was a, a huge task, but I mean, there is a consortium of, you know, people from different sectors of government, uh, we had to, you know, education plays a big role. We had to reach out to the Ministry of Human Development and Social Human Development, Social Transformation and Poverty of Alle Alleviation. Also, the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government played a role because um, Belize, we have, we have uh, our population density isn't very high. You know, we have rural communities and urban, and some of the rural communities are are very hard to access and um, as far as penetration goes for media uh, there's only one radio station that actually that they can actually access and some of those areas don't have electricity so they rely on battery powered radios so what we've been able to do is get it online um, get some of those that programming on the radio so that they can be able to access it and also delivering workbooks in those areas so that they actually have manuals where they can do the work and um, there are officers that go in and check on them and uh, make sure that the lessons are, are being carried out and such and checking on their progress but definitely not an easy task and that brings me to ask what is the workload like with regard to the press office seeing that there is a large space even though they may not be as dense densely populated as Trinidad and Tobago but what has that been like on you and the folks at the press office Oh well, we're we're like the little engine that could. I mean, we 
definitely have we're we're a very small unit with a very small staff complement, and uh, we're tasked with doing quite a bit. But we've been able to make it work. Um, a lot of it has been using technology. Um, the prime minister now has been based in Belize City primarily, as you know, our office is in Belmopan, so we've been able to um, cut down on the traveling and using technology. Uh, last week, the prime minister held his first. Uh, virtual press conference, and I think the week, two weeks before that, the Minister of Education had the first ever virtual press conference in Belize. So we've been trying to make use of technology to um, lighten our load, but uh, we're still in this, we're still considered an essential service, and especially documenting everything that's happening at such a historic time. Um, we've never seen times like this in recent history, um, especially for a very young country and small country like ourselves. Um, it's it's important that we document everything going on. So we've had our hands full, but we've been able to manage, thankfully. Thankfully. And speak to me about the Ask the Experts program, please, because it seems as though that's gaining a bit of traction. Right, right. It's been very popular. Um, we just came up with the idea. I mean, a lot of people have questions. Uh, uh, a lot of people aren't necessarily understanding some of the laws being put in place or the rationale behind them. Um, like I said, it's an unprecedented time. So we came up with the notion of addressing uh, the public straightforward, putting the people who they want to hear from in front of them and using technology again. So we go live on Facebook um, and on YouTube and it's been picked up by all the national, um, the national television channels. They're broadcasting it as well. Um, and what we do basically is we get uh, the, the Attorney General has actually been one of the most popular guests because he's uh, a very straightforward and blunt person, so people like to hear from him, especially when it comes to explaining laws in layman's terms. Uh, so we, we've been able to get, and also the Director of Health Services, who is leading the charge for COVID, and uh, he's been a frequent guest also answering, taking questions from the public and answering their questions and just kind of alleviate a lot of the, the fear that people have and the concerns that they have and just to give them an uh, update on the actual status of what's happening. Lastly, my last question, what has dialogue been across the political divide? Well, um, a lot of people would view Belize as uh, somewhat of a politically polarized country. However, that's we've been able to bridge that um, like never before. I mean, this is the prime minister has made it absolutely and abundantly clear that this um, time, this moment will not be politicized. The relief efforts will not be politicized. A uh, national oversight committee, when we were first um, for first posed with the threat of COVID, uh, the prime minister invited the leader of opposition to co-chair a national oversight committee with him and as it stands, they both co-chair the committee and they have, uh, and on the committee, there's representation from the public sector, private sector, the um, social partners, the churches, um, the unions, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, and it's just everyone working in tandem, trying to get, trying to do what's best, putting in the best measures um, so that there would be a balance uh, as well um, and try to do what's best for the country without any political interference or, or such. And um, that's what they've been doing, and it's, so far it's been working. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Pakeman. That's Dorian Pakeman, the director of the Belize Press Office, saying thanks again and to stay safe. Also letting you know that is what is trending on COVID-19. Remember, you can join us for live coverage on TTT, Talk City 91.1 FM, Sweet 100.1 FM, Next 99.1 FM, as well as on Facebook at TTT Live Online for all your COVID-19 updates. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of the TTT crew, I'm DK Rasta. Bye for now.